significant Atlantic storm likely to form next week on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 17th. The Atlantic's back up to its old tricks again with potentially another uh, serious interesting storm. But still we're looking at Tropical Storm Bipar Joy which is still active and still not too bad. Only faring in well inland now over the border between India and Pakistan. That was the 23rd storm of this year. So in the Atlantic now we've got the area of interest that's off the coast of Africa south of Cape Verde. 60% now on that over the next seven days and some models suggesting that it could become our first hurricane of the season. Fancy that out there in the main development region that has never happened in June. In the eastern Pacific a 20% chance that we've still got designated on day 34 of hurricane season. It's really struggling to get going this season and it looks like this system may be another one in a string uh, that has failed to develop. Western Pacific is quiet for the time being, not too much to look at there, but quite a bit of precipitation probably along the south coast of China there with that big long line of storms. And over India, Tropical Storm Bipojoy, which is continuing to move inland but quite frightfully slow at doing so, uh, probably causing a lot of rainfall over land and substantial um, accumulations which could be causing flooding concerns. But the system is shrinking and is on its way out. It's just going to take a little bit more time before it completely gets shown the door. Satellite imagery in the last 24 hours. Rain rate views here. Look out for any of the red spots which would denote any serious rainfall um, amounts in that moment. Which could cause flash flooding. And you can still see across Gujarat there uh, the imprint of Cyclone at Bipojoy. And here it is uh, in more visual terms on the geocolor imagery from Meteosat 9. And you can see how the system has really uh, stalled once again. And it's just uh, hanging about there right now. The southwestern side still blowing up a fair amount of convection all along the coast of India. India and Pakistan uh, but inland you can see the ice structure has pretty much co co uh, collapsed there uh, but it's still blowing up a little bit of convection round about the center of it it's moved over southeastern Pakistan for a brief time it's now moving back over India again and I think I can't quite tell from this imagery but I think it looks like it might have gone a little bit north of expected uh, which could throw some more rainfall uh, New Delhi's way over the next few days but it's still looking impressive enough for us to keep it at 50 miles per hour right now at an estimated central pressure of 992 millibars. Also I think we get a quick look at the Atlantic in this sequence as well uh, in a moment. Here it is the eastern Atlantic you can see a fair line there of uh, disturbed weather uh, not much rotation in that yet but we'll be on the lookout as soon as we see it we'll call it. Eastern Pacific still got really warm sea surface temperatures off the coast of Mexico pushing close to 32 degrees Celsius. There's plenty of fuel there but the systems aren't taking any heed of that right now. Florida Keys is a hot spot at the moment, temperatures pushing above 30 degrees there as well as on the western coast of Cuba. But the Atlantic as a whole is looking good and this system in the eastern Atlantic is sure to profit from well above average conditions in the eastern part of the ocean. Western Pacific is still building back in after the two recent typhoons but on the whole it's looking pretty good here. Very warm sea surface temperatures all along the Philippine Sea. Over the Philippines themselves around 31 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures there and fairly decent in the South China Sea too. Cyclone Bipojoy's imprint here in the Arabian Sea is fairly small. Uh, temperatures haven't decreased that much there. Bay of Bengal also looking good on the whole around 29 to 30 degrees generally. Southwest Indian Ocean as you can see here is in the late, well it's off season now, not much going on here, temperatures greatly reduced and in the Australian region as well only one or two spots of 28 degrees nearby and the South Pacific is riding that line as well, PG around 26 degrees on the southern islands, same for Vanuatu. 
Uh, and compared to average, this is what it looks like right now, and you'll see the first thing, probably the Atlantic there, the main development region, which is where we're looking at this potential system, uh, well above average, probably around two to three degrees above average at least, and that may contribute to our first hurricane in June in the main development region. Will it happen or not? Still big question marks, of course, the tropical storm hasn't formed yet. El Nino effect quite visible there in the eastern Pacific too. Oceanic heat content is building also in the main development region there, especially further towards the west, towards the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean there looking piping hot. Eastern Pacific also has a few areas of good conditions there, especially when you compare to last year, which even at its peak was looking pretty ill. The western Pacific though is really off the charts there in a few spots near the Philippines. Uh, plenty of energy right there. GFS suggests that we'll have a tropical storm in as little as 36 hours. And there it is, chunnering along the uh, across the Atlantic Ocean there, at first west northwesterly, and then it starts to add a slight northward component into it towards the end of that five day period. And you'll note there that on maybe day four, it becomes a hurricane, maybe even sooner than that if the GFS is to be believed. Other models are on board, but not all of them yet, and that's why we're keeping it at 60%. Eastern Pacific, it's still difficult to discern really exactly where this system will develop, but eventually there is that little signature there around the 18th or 19th of June, uh, but models are once again very uncertain about this. Of course, it had that other system which has now been scrubbed, and this one that we're keeping at 20% because there are still a few models on board with a system, but from what I hear, other forecasters and onlookers are pretty much giving up on this system as well. And this is Bipo Joy moving inland. It's still got a decent core on that initialization of the model, and GFS thinks it'll hang around for a bit longer there, only losing tropical storm status uh, on the afternoon of, let's see, Monday, I think that was. So it could still hang around for that long. I think the GFS is still being optimistic, but we gotta hold our hands up. The storm has done a lot better than we expected when it moved inland, and that, of course, is exactly what the GFS was earlier predicting, although it didn't quite strengthen back to hurricane status like it was forecasting, but nonetheless, it has surprised us a little bit. We're still looking at rainfall accumulations on top of what we've already seen so far, uh, important to note that a further 10 inches of rain possible on the south side of this storm as it continues to traverse east northeastwards. There it is, 10 inches, 250 millimeters, maybe slightly higher than that in a few spots there into central India and a few spots even further east there getting around 6 inches which is uh, 150 millimeters so still very substantial rainfall amounts possible across that whole region although the coastal areas where the storm first made landfall looks like they're well in the clear now with no further rain expected uh, same too for southern pakistan as well there into the longer range day five to ten this is what things are looking like atlantic of course the evolution of this hurricane and also another little system there that moves up the uh, west coast of florida for a brief time quite an elongated system disorganized and eventually makes landfall in the florida panhandle watch that again and look at the hurricane further east as well which gives the lesser antilles a little run for its money but it does safely and successfully recurve there in that 10 day period although it may also get quite close to bermuda really interesting track to see so early in the season scan this barcode on the top right and that will take you through to the force 13 store where you can take a look at all our products including our full season and individual storm animations available on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt which is selling in their droves and one day it'll be a uh, a um, antique piece i'm sure and we'll probably fetch a load of money at auction Anyway, here's the uh, continuation in the silly range of this hurricane, which becomes very broad and then dies off uh, not far from uh, Newfoundland. Uh, of course, this is extremely long range. The uh, system hasn't even formed yet. So it's a big question mark as to whether any of this happens. Um, it's always wise to never make any uh, confident predictions until the actual system has become a tropical cyclone. 
and the Western Pacific. At first you'd see nothing, maybe a little bit of rotation actually near the Philippines on the right hand side moving up towards Taiwan but right at the end here popping out of nowhere right on day 15 and 16 a tropical cyclone pops up there it is and gathers quite a bit of momentum very quickly there as it moves through the central towards western Micronesian islands uh, that could be a sign of things to come but that is very far out as a matter of fact that's the first of July that's how far the models extend out now up to the second there you can talk about that and anything around our world of tropics on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather chat. Of course, you can talk about many other subjects on there as well. Big welcoming community, usually, uh, with over 3,400 members. But don't be shy. On June 17th, 1971, two storms were vying for attention, both at Category 1 strength. Frida was making landfall in southern China as a Category 1, and Bridget was also a Category 1 pictured along the coast of Mexico, looking interesting on that image. Quite hard to see the eye. Of course, satellite imagery wasn't the best, um, and the storm would weaken after uh, scraping the coast there and moving back towards the uh, west-northwest. That was on this day 52 years ago. Back to today, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is looking very likely now. It's Brett. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian is still proving to be quite elusive. And in the Central Pacific, proving to be completely missing, is Hone, which is still coming up on that list. We've been waiting nearly four years. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Talim, and in the North Indian Ocean, of course, next up is Tej. We didn't quite get it last week with 3B, but who knows, it might pop in again fairly soon. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the names will roll over at the start of July, but for the time being, Gazani is the next name. In the Australian region, it's Jasper, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.